Hi everybody, it's Menopause Barbie joining you again. We're doing menopause, your management, your way, now and for the rest of your life. We're nearing the end of our discussion on estrogens. So far, in the estrogen category, we've discussed phytoestrogens, which encompass both foods and the botanical and herbal estrogens. We've discussed bioidentical estrogens, and we've discussed synthetic pharmaceutical estrogens. So you're probably thinking, well, what else is there, menopause Barbie? And if you're wondering what else there could possibly be, good for you. It means that you're really on top of things. But it just so happens that in the case of estrogens, there's one more category, sort of. And that's because this last category consists of substances that aren't really estrogens at all, <laughs> but they act like estrogens. It's, it's sort of like they're estrogen wannabes or estrogen imposters. So why should you care about these estrogen imposters? Why should you watch this video? Well, here's why. You could have osteoporosis and need to prevent further bone loss and these estrogen imposters do that. Or you could be at high risk for osteoporosis and want to avoid deterioration into actual osteoporosis. And these estrogen imposters do that. You could want to avoid some of the risks of estrogen, but gain some of the benefits of estrogen. And these estrogen imposters do that. So whether or not any of these scenarios interest you now, you want to know all the options, right? And knowing about these estrogen imposters is a big part of having a full fund of knowledge. So let me tell you about these estrogen imposters. Today we are going to cover the material on pages 130 to 131 of the book and we are on page 29 of the outline notes. We're talking about some substances called CIRMs. CIRM, S-E-R-M. It's an acronym for Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulators. Now, you know how I am when it comes to teaching. I assume you know nothing. So, let's break that acronym down and discuss what each one of those words means. But first, I'll just tell you the gist of the whole CIRM business. CIRMs are non-hormonal synthetic products that behave like the hormone estrogen in some ways, but not in other ways. They do some of the things that estrogen does, and they oppose some of the things that estrogen does. So it's kind of like they're a two-faced friend toward estrogen. Do you remember in tutorial 25 when we talked about estrogen receptor sites? We said that a receptor site is nothing more than a parking space for an estrogen hormone. So estrogen receptor sites are reserved parking spaces for estrogen only. But here's the catch. CIRMs can park in parking spots that are reserved for estrogen. So here is an estrogen receptor and here's a parking spot and it's reserved for estrogen. Okay, it says estrogen parking only, but the exception is CIRMs. So what happens is a CIRM can come along and because it's an estrogen imposter, it can actually park in the parking spot that is reserved for estrogen. So even though a serum is not even a hormone, it's similar enough to estrogen to be able to get away with parking in a spot that's reserved for estrogen. Some people refer to serums as designer estrogens. And that's because they behave just like estrogen in some tissues, but they oppose estrogen in other tissues. Now you've already seen that there are some things about estrogen that you like and other things that you don't like, right? Well, 
SERMS enable you to keep the benefits of estrogen and avoid the risks of estrogen. Do you remember way back in the earlier tutorials when I told you that everything has both benefits and risks? And your job is to weigh the benefits against the risks in making choices for managing your menopause your way. Well, SERMs give you a whole category of agents to help you do that. So let's dissect the acronym SERM, S-E-R-M, so you can see what I mean. Okay, S stands for selective. SERMs are selective because they bind with some estrogen receptors in some parts of your body and not with others. It's as if they're more picky about where they'll bind than even real estrogen is. So instead of just being selective about the actual parking spot, SERMs are also selective about the parking lot. It's like a SERM will keep circling the block for its preferred parking lot and then it'll keep circling the lot until it finds its preferred parking spot. So they're super, super picky. All this means is that SERMs are selective about the part of the body that they act on. So now we've done S, E. E is for estrogen. Now you already know that many hormones are involved with your menopausal experience. SERMs are estrogen imitators. They imitate estrogen only, not any of the other hormones. Okay, so we have S and E. Now R. R is for receptor. SERMs bind to estrogen receptors. They're the estrogen parking spaces that are waiting for an estrogen hormone to bind. Okay? But the serum is allowed to park in the spot reserved for estrogen. So what you have is the estrogen receptor bound to a serum. Okay? Only certain estrogen receptors will allow the serum to bind. And that's just because they're all very selective. So, so far you have S for selective, E for estrogen, and R for receptor. Selective estrogen receptor. So now you have something that selectively binds to estrogen receptors. And then you have M. M is for modulators. SERMs modulate or modify the effect of estrogen. So in other words, instead of causing the very same result as real estrogen does, SERMs bring about a more desirable result. So now, if we analyze the, uh, the entire acronym as a whole, we have selective estrogen receptor modulators, which means substances that selectively bind to some estrogen receptors and modify the effect that estrogen would have. The general tendency is for that modulation to be one that is more beneficial than risky. So, what does all this mean? Well, it means that SERMs try to produce the benefits of estrogen without the risks of estrogen. So SERMs are a good option if you want some of the benefits of estrogen, but you don't want to use estrogen in particular, or you don't want to use hormones in general. So let's apply this information so that you can see how SERMs work. Your body has four areas that bear estrogen receptors your bones, your breasts, this is only half a breast but it's representative of your breasts, your heart arteries, so these are the arteries of your heart, it's the round tubes through which blood flows, your heart arteries, and your uterus, just your uterus, not all this other stuff, okay? so. Those four areas, a serm can be friendly or unfriendly to each of those areas. Now, friendliness is determined by whether the serm is beneficial or risky to each of those body parts. It's really simple. A serm is friendly if it's beneficial, 
and a CIRM is unfriendly if it's risky. It's no different than your human friends, right? I mean, a friendly friend is a beneficial or good friend, and an unfriendly friend <laughs> is a risky or bad friend. So let's talk about friendliness toward each of these body parts. We'll start with bone. Okay, so a CIRM is bone friendly if it decreases your risk for osteoporosis. And a CIRM is bone unfriendly if it increases your risk for osteoporosis, okay? It's very simple. In fact, prevention of osteoporosis is the primary reason for using a CIRM. Now let's go to the breast. Okay, a CIRM is breast friendly if it decreases your risk for breast cancer. And a CIRM is breast unfriendly if it increases your risk for breast cancer. That's simple. Going to the heart, a CIRM is heart friendly if it decreases your risk for a heart attack. And a CIRM is heart unfriendly if it increases your risk for a heart attack. And finally, the uterus. A CIRM is uterus friendly if it decreases your risk for a uterine cancer, and it's uterus unfriendly if it increases your risk for uterine cancer. You see, it's pretty easy, right? And it makes sense when you're thinking about what friendliness is all about. Now, finally, a CIRM can be neutral in any of these areas. And that turns out to be one of the great things about CIRMs because neutrality can be a good thing. A CIRM is neutral. It has a neutral effect on an area if it neither increases nor decreases the risk for a disease. In other words, it's not beneficial or risky. It's just neutral. So let's adopt a simple code to indicate whether a CIRM is friendly, unfriendly, or neutral. We're going to use a plus sign to indicate friendliness. And we'll use a negative sign to indicate unfriendliness. And we'll use a zero to indicate neutrality. It's as you might have expected, right? So to sum this up, a CIRM is a synthetic non-estrogen that selectively binds with some estrogen receptors in some parts of your body and not in others. So think of CIRMs as synthetic, non-hormonal estrogen imposters that mimic only some of the characteristics of estrogen. CIRMs can act on your bone, your breasts, your heart, or your uterus to produce the friendly effect of decreasing your risk for a disease or the unfriendly effect of increasing your risk for disease. Or they can have no effect at all. Let's cite some examples. Let's, example number one, let's say that you have had breast cancer and your doctor has said that taking estrogen is a risky option for you. And let's say that you also have had a total hysterectomy, bilateral salpingo-oophorectomy in the past for reasons that are completely unrelated to cancer. Now, the total hysterectomy means you have had your uterus and cervix removed, right? And the bilateral salpingo-oophorectomy means that you have had your fallopian tubes and ovaries removed. Remember this? I taught you all of this in tutorial number eight. If you haven't watched that one, you gotta go back and do it because it's one of the most important videos. And if you have watched it but you've forgotten everything, go watch it again. Okay, back to our example. Let's say that in addition to having had breast cancer, and in addition to having had your total hysterectomy, bilateral salpingo oophorectomy, you don't have problems with hot flashes, but you're really worried about osteoporosis, and you want to take something for that. Well, there's a CIRM that might be the answer for you. Example number two. Let's say you have a terrible fear of estrogen because of something you've read. 
So you're vehemently opposed to taking estrogen, but you really, really want to prevent osteoporosis because your mother had it, and your mother died from a hip fracture and its complications. You want to use something with the fewest risks possible. There's a serum that could be the answer for you. Example number three. Let's say you're already on a very low dose of estrogen that suffices for alleviating your hot flashes. But your doctor's told you that it's not enough to prevent osteoporosis. You want to continue taking your low dose estrogen but you want to add something to it that will prevent osteoporosis but won't increase your risk for breast cancer, uterine cancer, or a heart attack. There's a serum that might be the answer for you. Example number four. Let's say that vaginal dryness is your primary concern. You aren't opposed to estrogen, but you want enough to, present, to prevent osteoporosis without taking too much. But you're not a fan of taking multiple medications, and you just want one single medication to take care of both your vagina and your bones. But you want that one medication to leave your breast, heart, and uterus alone. Well, there's a serum that might be the answer for you. As you can see, the serums can make a positive difference for a lot of reasons, and for a lot of women. You might be one of them. So, now that you understand what the CIRMs are about, tune into the next video to meet the CIRMs. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to inter introduce each one of them to you so that you can recognize them by name and you know how friendly or unfriendly each one is. And as usual, you know, I'll do the show and tell thing and demonstrate each, each one of the CIRMs to you so that you see, see what they look like and I'll describe all the details, pros and cons, advantages, disadvantages. You know me. I give you the whole big picture. Pros, you know, I'm not, I'm not promoting anything. I'm just making sure you have all your information. Okay, so that does it for today. I'll see you next time and that's when I'll introduce you to the actual products that constitute the CIRMs. See you then. Bye. <laughs>